After my future mother-in-law humiliated Maine at our party, I confronted her now the family is divided and pressuring us to let her move back in. I, 32M, am getting married to my fiancé Yancey Deborah, 31F, next month. We have been together for two years and I just asked her to marry me last month. I'm head over heels for this wonderful woman and can't wait to spend the rest of my life with her. We come from very different backgrounds. I grew up in a working class family and I'm the middle child among my two siblings. We always had to work hard living paycheck to paycheck every month. Deborah, on the other hand, had a much more comfortable upbringing. Her dad was a successful businessman so he could provide her with everything. She was always surrounded by wealthy kids who threw extravagant parties and events. I put in a lot of effort to work my way through college and eventually landed a job at a prestigious company. My parents were truly proud of how I had built my life without ever depending on them to provide me with financial assistance. When Deborah and I met for the first time, it was at a mutual friend's party. Although we knew we were worlds apart, we still had an instant connection. We started going on dates, taking the time to truly understand each other, and with each passing day we fell head over heels for one another. Once we started seriously dating, Deborah eventually invited me to one of her family's dinners so she could formally introduce me to her parents. That's when I had the pleasure of meeting her dad, John, a successful businessman, and her mom, Maggie, who was a dedicated stay-at-home mom for the first time. John seemed to appreciate the effort I had put into building my life. Maggie, on the other hand, didn't seem to take a liking to me. It was quite evident that she looked down on my upbringing, and I didn't fit her expectations for the kind of son-in-law she had in mind. Her disapproval of me was far from subtle, it was painfully evident. She didn't hold back in making it clear that her only child deserved someone she considered better than me. She would often cut me off in conversations and her disapproving glances spoke volumes, making it a challenging and awkward situation to navigate. In contrast, my parents couldn't have been more welcoming to Deborah. They embraced her with open arms, and my brothers took an instant liking to her. They would playfully tease her, telling her that she still had time to run away and escape from me, all in good fun of course. It was heartwarming to see my family so supportive and accepting of our relationship. As time went on, I did my best to bridge the gap with Maggie, hoping to win her over. I understood that our different backgrounds and expectations might take her some time to reconcile. However, our interactions continued to remain strained, and I could sense her disapproval lingering in the background. Despite this challenge, Deborah and I focused on building our own world together, filled with love, understanding, and shared dreams. We were committed to nurturing our relationship, even in the midst of these familial disparities. We held on to the hope that, as time went by, Maggie might eventually come to accept and embrace me. Sadly, a year ago, John passed away from a heart attack suddenly. While he left behind substantial wealth, there were also unexpected debts that needed to be settled. Maggie had to make the difficult decision to sell her house and their car to cover these financial obligations when the bank came calling. Since then she had to move in with us as she had nowhere else to go and has been living with us for the past six months. I didn't really mind having her live with us as I understood that she was going through a difficult time as she had just lost her husband. I tried my best to make her stay as comfortable as possible but Maggie always found reasons to complain about around the house. Just for context, Deborah and I have always shared our responsibilities equally since we started living together. Given our careers we take turns handling tasks like cooking, cleaning, and doing the laundry as part of our routine. It's a way for us to balance our busy lives and support each other in every aspect. My parents had taught me to be independent from a very young age so I loved doing my share of the household work. Maggie absolutely despised this and would make her disapproval obvious. Throughout her stay, she has made subtle comments about how a man doesn't belong in the kitchen or a man shouldn't be doing household work. Usually I don't take it to heart and I ignore it as much as possible but over time, her comments have become progressively more hurtful and insensitive. I have talked to Deborah regarding this and she agrees that her mother's behavior has been very difficult and hostile. Now coming on to the incident, I was recently promoted at work hence I wanted to do something special to celebrate this milestone with our family and friends. We decided to host a grand event, inviting our close ones. My to be Mill also extended invitations to some of her rich friends, whom she hadn't seen for a while, particularly after her husband's passing. While I'm not one to flaunt things, I entrusted Deborah with the planning, and she went all out with the party preparations. On the day of the celebration, our house looked great. As the guests started arriving, Maggie seemed to be having a good time, reconnecting with her old friends. My fiancé and I were busy hosting our own friends and relatives, as the party was in full swing and the guests mingled and enjoyed the festivities, I couldn't help but notice that my to be Mill's behavior had taken a turn for the worse. She had a few too many drinks and her comments started to get more and more inappropriate. She was bragging about how expensive everything around the house was, particularly the decorations and the food, in front of her friends. It was becoming increasingly uncomfortable, and I could see that some of our guests were taken aback by her behavior. My fiancé and I exchanged worried glances, unsure of how to handle the situation. We attempted to stay cool as we knew Maggie had been drinking a lot since the morning. 
At one point we ran out of wine so I dashed to the nearby liquor store. When I got back home my fiancé outside on the lawn, enjoying her time with our relatives. I served them the drinks and then headed back inside to check on the rest of our guests. That's when I heard my mother-in-law loudly laughing. As she chatted with her friends, I was about to enter the room when I overheard Maggie mentioning my recent job promotion to her friends and went on to describe how she had been living at our place for several months rent-free, all because I was a naive person. She laughed as she continued to say that she had finally landed a simp son-in-law and pointed out that I had been covering her expenses throughout this time while she lived rent-free in my house. Her words stung and I was taken aback by what she was saying. Her friends were all laughing loudly at my expense. She then went on to say that she was set for the rest of her life now that Deborah was going to marry me in a few months. My emotions were in turmoil, and I struggled with how to handle the situation. It was disheartening to hear these derogatory comments coming from someone whom I considered family, someone I had tried my best to welcome and support during a difficult time in her life. As I stood there in the hallway, grappling with a mix of anger, disappointment, and a sense of betrayal, I contemplated whether to confront her or wait for a more suitable moment to talk about this. My to-be Mill then told her friends that because I came from a low-income family I would continue to be a hard worker to her, and she had nothing to worry about. At that moment I couldn't hear her talk that way any longer and made a decision to walk into the room and confront her right then and there. I wanted to make it clear to her that she wouldn't be able to take advantage of me anymore. With a wine bottle in hand, I walked into the room and everyone fell into an awkward silence when they noticed my sudden arrival. Maggie's laughter ceased, and her expression shifted from surprise to a mixture of discomfort and concern. She was worried that I might have overheard the conversation. Pouring wine for everyone and placing the bottle down, I faced Maggie and began to speak Maggie. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation with your friends. I stood there for a good five minutes, listening to you talk about how you've used my perceived naivety to your advantage. I want to make it clear that I welcomed you into my house with open arms and tried to support you during a difficult time, particularly because you had just lost your husband. However, making hurtful comments like this in front of our family and friends and laughing at my expense is not acceptable. The room remained tense with a heavy silence weighing down on all of us. I could see that Maggie was taken aback by the directness of my words, and her friends seemed equally uncomfortable. Just as the tension was at its peak, my fiancé walked into the room, a puzzled expression on her face as she tried to understand what was happening as I stood in the middle of the room. With Deborah now in the room, I went on to explain to her what her mother had been telling people about me. Deborah's eyes widened in shock as she tried to comprehend the gravity of the situation. Maggie's expression shifted from shock to embarrassment. I knew I wouldn't be able to forgive her for the way she had spoken about me. I asked Maggie to immediately leave my house. Maggie's eyes widened as she began to frantically protest, knowing that she had nowhere else to go. Deborah remained quiet as she understood how humiliated I had felt because of her mother. I remained resolute in my decision, emphasizing that I could no longer trust my to-be mill to be living with us. I suggested she could find accommodation with one of her wealthy friends who had joined the party and were evidently relishing and laughing at my expense just minutes ago. Maggie looked around the room, helplessly as her friends avoided eye contact and I couldn't help but smirk. I had reached my breaking point and was no longer willing to be used and taken advantage of. In that tense moment Deborah, who had been taken aback by the unfolding drama, finally spoke up. She addressed her mother with a mix of disappointment and determination. Mom, you've put us in an incredibly uncomfortable situation with your behavior today. We've always tried to support you, but this kind of treatment towards my fiancé is unacceptable. Maggie, now caught between her daughter's disapproval and her own embarrassing behavior, began to realize the gravity of the situation. She had no easy way out and attempted to apologize, but I wasn't willing to be manipulated any longer. Still seething in anger and disappointment, I walked out of the room. The party soon ended and my to-be mill apparently left to stay at one of her relatives' places. Since the incident, I have been receiving messages from people with a variety of reactions. Most of the guests seem to support my decision to stand up for myself. But there are some family members from my fiancé's side who are telling Deborah that what I did was wrong and that I should not have humiliated her mother like that. My parents, who were present at the party, supported me 100% and had my back. The situation has caused a divide between our families and the mixed opinions are adding to the tension. So, I wanted to post here so I could get an unbiased opinion. Am I the a-hole for confronting my to-be mill in front of everyone after I caught her making fun of me and letting her know that she won't be able to leech off me? Update 1 Thanks to everyone for your feedback on my last post. Many folks have suggested that this incident should serve as an eye-opener to the kind of family I would be marrying into. I have received suggestions that I should get a prenup with my fiancé before we get married which I honestly never really thought about before. But after the recent incident I'm seriously considering it. That day after the party ended, my wife and I had a lengthy conversation to discuss everything. While my wife is completely on my side, it's hard to deny that my trust has been shaken. It's not her fault, but I'm worried about her family and how easily they could manipulate me in the future. 
Many comments have pointed out that my mother-in-law's subtle mean comments for all these months were a form of emotional abuse, and I'm starting to see it that way too. I do not wish to have her in my life anymore. Two days after Maggie left, she called my wife, who chose not to answer. So, she sent me an angry text that read, Adam, are you happy now that you've separated me from my daughter? I've already lost my husband, and now I'm losing my daughter because of you. Yes, I used you, but isn't that what a son-in-law should do, pay for his to be mother-in-law's expenses? You could have bought me a new place when I lost my house, but instead, you forced me to live with you. You have more than enough to take care of my daughter, so it wouldn't hurt you to take care of me too. Her message left me seething with anger, and it was evident she felt no remorse for her derogatory remarks in front of her friends. I shared the message with Deborah, who promptly assured me she would address the situation and advised me to block her mother's number. It remains to be seen what happens next, but I feel emotionally exhausted dealing with this ongoing drama. Her mother's persistent unkindness towards me for no apparent reason, coupled with her unwarranted financial expectations, is really taking a toll on me. Update 2 Okay everyone here's the update you all have been waiting for. In the days that followed, Deborah continued to handle her mother's attempts at contact. She firmly explained to her mother that the situation had become untenable and that she had crossed a line. Deborah offered to help her mother find suitable accommodations but emphasized that the living arrangement with us had reached its limit. Maggie's responses ranged from anger to pleading. She continued to accuse me of tearing her family apart and causing her more pain during an already difficult time. I had blocked her so fortunately, she had no way to reach out to me. As our wedding was fast approaching, I shared my thoughts and fears with Deborah, and she took it surprisingly well. My fiancé agreed that I wasn't wrong to have those fears in my head and told me that she was ready to sign a prenup so I wouldn't feel this restless and uncomfortable. I was taken aback by how understanding she was and I couldn't help but feel guilty for having any negative thoughts about her, all because of her mother's actions. After that conversation, I felt much better about our relationship. We were starting to regain a sense of normalcy when Maggie unexpectedly showed up at our doorstep a few days later without any warning. I was alone at home when I heard the doorbell ring. She had come to confront me and her accusations and anger poured out when I welcomed her inside to sit. Maggie claimed that I had ruined her relationship with her daughter forever, laying the blame squarely on my shoulders. Her words were filled with frustration and resentment. You think you can just control everything, don't you? She exclaimed. You've taken my daughter away from me and now you're trying to push me out of her life. This is my family too. And you can't just dictate what happens here. As the argument escalated, her accusations became more personal and cutting. She accused me of isolating her from Debra and said that she deserved to be living with her daughter. I took a deep breath, trying to remain composed in the face of her accusations, and responded, Maggie, this isn't about pushing you away. It's about preserving the peace and well-being of our family. Your actions and words have made it challenging to maintain a healthy environment here. I'm not trying to isolate you, I'm trying to set boundaries, I continued. Deborah and I deserve to have a loving, supportive, and peaceful home. It's not about control. It's about ensuring that our relationship is respected and protected. At that point, Thankfully, my wife returned from the grocery store, and I breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that she could handle her mother better. She was visibly shocked to find her mother standing inside our house. Hurrying to my side, she asked if I was okay, concern evident in her eyes. I nodded morbidly, relieved to have her presence beside me. Maggie, now directing her attention toward her daughter, accused me of trying to be controlling of her life. She said that she won't let me kick her out of the house and she planned to live here if my daughter was going to be here. She accused me of trying to divide the family apart since her husband had passed away. Deborah seemed pissed as she explained to her mother that after what she had spoken about me, she couldn't just expect me to forget about it. She reminded Maggie that she never even apologized to me for the harsh words she had spoken in front of the guests at a party that I had thrown her my house. Deborah reiterated to her mother that she was not entitled to live in my house just because Deborah was going to marry me. Maggie was displeased seeing her daughter support me, and it only seemed to escalate her anger. The room was charged with emotions and I didn't want this to escalate further so I asked Maggie to leave immediately otherwise I would call the police. Maggie's expression displayed a mixture of frustration and resignation, as she clearly wanted to argue about this further, but, thankfully, she decided to leave. After this incident, I am planning to take some space from Debra and her family. I love her a lot. But I don't want to be stuck in a toxic environment like this forever. I guess I need to take some time to rethink our future. Update 3 It's been four months since my last update and I know it's been a long time but here I am. I am thrilled to share that Debra and I are now happily married. Our wedding day went off without a hitch and it was a beautiful celebration of our love and commitment to each other. We were surrounded by our closest family and friends, and the day was filled with joy and cherished memories. I know I had mentioned last time that I was a bit unsure about marrying her but after some time off alone, I realized that she was nothing like her mother. As we had discussed before our marriage, Debra did sign a prenuptial agreement, which gave us both peace of mind. It was a decision that helped ensure that our relationship was built on trust, respect, and a mutual understanding of our responsibilities. 
One notable absence on our special day was Maggie, our mother-in-law. We did invite her as I didn't want my wife to not invite her only living parent to witness our wedding, but Maggie chose not to attend the wedding. Her anger and resentment towards me from the earlier conflicts, which led to her leaving our home permanently, still lingered. I couldn't help but feel sad for Debra, who had to navigate the difficult decision of having her mother absent on such an important occasion. Nonetheless, our wedding was a day filled with love and happiness. We were grateful for the support of our loved ones who celebrated the beginning of our journey as a married couple. In the days following our wedding, Deborah and I have settled into our married life, cherishing the moments we share together and planning for our future. We are excited about the possibilities that lay ahead, and we know that our love will guide us through any challenges we might face. Update 4, Married Life Has Been Going Great So Far Deborah and I have been relishing every moment of our life together as a married couple. We found joy in the little things, from lazy Sunday mornings with breakfast in bed to sitting at home and reading books together. Our love has continued to grow and we've become even more in sync with each other. We have embraced the various responsibilities that come with marriage rather smoothly. Recently I have taken a significant step in my journey toward personal growth and family healing. Thanks to everyone's advice, I decided to start therapy, and it has been a transformative experience ever since. Therapy has provided me with the tools to better understand and express myself and the dynamics within our family. It has allowed me to address the emotional wounds and challenges that I have faced, especially in my relationship with my mother-in-law. With the guidance of my therapist, I have been able to communicate more effectively with my wife and work on building a stronger and more communicative relationship. Once I felt I was ready, we tried to reach out to Maggie, hoping to mend the rift that had developed between us. While it wasn't easy for me to reach out, I knew how much Deborah loved her mother and I didn't want her to live her life without being in contact with her only remaining parent. We decided to invite Maggie to our home for dinner so we could all talk properly. Maggie had been staying at various relatives' places since the incident, and when Deborah first reached out with a dinner invitation, it took her by surprise. She seemed hesitant, but also intrigued by the opportunity to reconnect with her daughter. She arrived at our home and we cautiously began with small talk to catch up on each other's lives. Deborah was the first to break the ice, expressing her desire to see a healthier relationship between me and Maggie. She shared how much she loved both of us and wanted to see us get along. Hearing this, Maggie slowly admitted that her actions had been fueled by a sense of loss and uncertainty after her husband's passing and that she had let those emotions cloud her judgment. She apologized to me for the way she had behaved and expressed that she didn't understand at first how much she had hurt me. I could see that she seemed genuinely sorry about the incident. The conversation continued, delving into the hurt feelings on both sides, the misunderstandings that had occurred, and the steps that could be taken to mend the rift. It was an emotional and honest discussion, marked by tears and heartfelt apologies. Debra played a crucial role in facilitating the conversation, acting as a bridge between me and her mother. By the end of the evening, amidst a wonderful dinner, there was a of relief and optimism in the room. While the wounds of the past hadn't completely healed, the foundation for reconciliation had been laid. It was a promising start on the journey toward rebuilding the bonds that had been strained for so long. Since the evening we have continued to meet Maggie during other family events, and there is no longer any awkwardness. Our relationship has gradually improved. Although I will never feel comfortable enough for her to live with us again, I remain patient and understanding, knowing that healing will take time.